of where we stand. And uh, again, uh, professionals all the way around, and that's always very much appreciated. Um, you know, we've done this before, right? With Winter Storm Uri in 20, uh, we handled a, a week of freezing and, um, you know, multiple uh, public service issues. We had water line breaks. We had sewer issues. We had electric delivery issues. Um, we did that in 20, and we survived it. We uh, did that again in 21 with that ice storm. All, um, you know, again, the, the 600,000 cubic yards of material, and we're doing it again now. So we've done this before. Um, our public, public servants, our public safety folks know how to do this. Um, unfortunately, lately we are well seasoned in doing this, but we have it. So I don't want anybody in the community to think that for some reason the city of Temple is standing flat-footed. We have the assets in place. Um, we, have the, uh, we have the people in place. We're a resilient community, and, um, and we'll, we'll get through this again just like we have the last few years. So um, thank you to the citizens of Temple and, uh, and being able to provide the tax dollars that provide the assets to keep our community clean and to keep our community safe. And so if nothing else, what I want, the message I want to pass on is that we're prepared. It's going to take a while, but we are prepared for this, and, um, and the city of Temple will be just fine. And also I ask that you be sure that whenever you see your first responders, those folks that are out there in the fire trucks and the squad cars, et cetera, um, whenever you see them after this is over, thank them because they are the ones that are working hard to keep us safe. So, uh, again, thank you all for being here. That's the end of my comments. And uh, we, we appreciate everything that y'all do for our community. Thanks. Uh, morning, everyone. Following last night's event, all available staff with the Temple Police Department responded from around the area to assist with the safety and security in the city of Temple. In addition, we requested assistance from a number of outside agencies to include the Colleen Police Department, the United States Marshals, Texas Department of Wildlife, Temple Independent School District, Troy Police Department, Rogers Police Department, and Gatesville's Public Works. Due to the damage for safety and security and the protection of property, we have restricted access in some areas of the city. Portions of our city sustained significant damage last night. I know there is a natural curiosity to want to look at the damage throughout the community. However, I'm requesting that you please be aware that some of our areas of our community will have restricted access to owners and residents that live in those areas. Please honor our efforts to protect certain areas as we continue to have down power lines and extensive damage throughout some areas. We would ask everyone, please do not drive around barricades, cones, or police vehicles. They have been placed in specific areas for your safety. I would ask that if you do not have to be on the road, please do not be out and about. I got a text message from an officer. He said it should have taken him seven minutes to get someplace. It took him over 30 minutes to get to where he needed to respond to. I cannot emphasize enough to please stay off the road if you do not have a legitimate reason to be out. You are slowing down first responders and you are slowing down various service providers who are trying to restore the normal access to services that we so enjoy. In addition, following the recent rain that we just got through moments ago, I would ask you to please do not drive into high water. Turn around, do not drown. Two areas of our community that were hit hardest are Lake Point and Lake Point Terrace in the West Temple area. We have restricted access at the following locations for both the safety and security of the community. For members of our community that live inside of Lake Point and Lake Point Terrace, we request that if you need to get access to those areas, please respond to Tarver Elementary. Officers will verify your residency and we will make sure you get access to your property. The Temple Police Department has restricted access at the following locations in the Lake Point and Lake Point Terrace area. Along Brahma and Conterra near Skycrest. Prairie Creek and Fieldstone, Parkfield and Fieldstone. Fieldstone and Brahma, Hawthorne and Brahma, Honeysuckle and Brahma, Redbrush and Brahma, Westfield and Adams, Fieldstone and Westfield, 
Cedar, and Alabama. We also have officers stationed along the Adams Corridor at various locations. Meadowbrook is closed south and north of West Adams due to power lines across the roadway. Businesses in this area between Westfield and Meadowbrook also sustained heavy damage and officers are providing security to the area while these businesses are secured. We will continue to have a presence throughout the community 24-7, 365 as we navigate this challenge. Following the event last night, officers entered numerous businesses and residents checking for potentially injured staff, employees, and residents. Additional checks will continue today as necessary. The Temple Police Department remains upstaffed with personnel and outside agency assistance, and we will continue to have additional staff on duty until it is no longer needed. Thank you to our outside agency partners who responded to assist us last night and who remain on site today to assist us as we navigate the challenges associated with the storm. For emergency needs, emergency needs, always call 911. For non-emergency law enforcement needs, please call 254-298-5500. Please stay away from damaged areas and stay off the road if you do not need to be out. In the midst of the challenges that we face, I wanted to highlight what we observed yesterday and continue to observe today. Personal observations within the city and community of the city of Temple, Bell County, and the Texas spirit really rises to the occasion and reemphasizes the goodness in humanity. We have observed neighbor helping neighbor, neighbor helping friends, and neighbors helping strangers. Similar to our experience with Winter Storm Uri, the Temple, Bell County, and Texas community respond very well to challenges. Please continue to take care of yourselves and each other. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to start off by addressing the storm uh, to start off with. So. Uh, last night, uh, Emergency Manager Henniger and I were uh, both watching uh, weather radar uh, and in constant communication with the National Weather Service concerning the storm as it approached our city. Um, shortly before arriving in our city, it did turn tornadic um, with uh, estimated radar wind speeds over 80 miles an hour and also uh, massive rotation noted within that. At uh, uh, 6.03 yesterday, we, we uh, had the first tornado warning. Uh, that included the city of Temple and our sirens, outdoor warning sirens were activated at that time. Um, a second time as that storm came actually to the city of Temple and was entering the city limits at 8, or I'm sorry, at 620, uh, we sounded the sirens a second time uh, to again urge residents to take shelter and cover. Um, and then a third time at 625, we activated the sirens um, on the east side of Temple as the storm progressed across town and started to uh, threaten the uh, areas uh, east of I-35. Um, within moments after the storm passed, uh, fire stations and fire crews uh, immediately uh, sprung into action, um, and two of them actually had to self-extricate themselves from their stations um, as they were damaged by the storm as it passed. Uh, luckily, no fire crews were, were uh, injured and no fire apparatus were damaged, and so they were out in the community uh, very quickly. We initiated an emergency callback of our crews, and uh, we, we had a overwhelming response of our personnel back in and had every uh, Temple Fire Rescue vehicle uh, staffed uh, working well into the night last night. Um, we had uh, over 500 homes and businesses uh, impacted in some way, shape, or form from uh, minor roof damage or uh, tree damage to uh, major structural uh, damage and, and uh, potentially <coughs> even destroyed the structure. A uh, hundred of those were personally searched by uh, Temple Fire Rescue and our, our mutual aid partners as well as Temple PD uh, to assure the safety of the residents and the, uh, the employees that were in those structures. And we uh, counted over 30 different injuries. Most of those were minor in nature and were either self-transported to the hospital or taken by uh, our local EMS provider, Temple EMS and Colleen EMS, uh, as they came to our aid last night. Uh, currently, uh, we feel that the, uh, the search and rescue portion of this is over, but we do stand ready with additional crews uh, to respond to any uh, 
uh, incidents or, or needs that are found in the, in the community. And so we do stand ready still to go back into that search and rescue mode if needed uh, for those that are affected. Um, we will be starting the recovery phase at this point. So um, from this point forward, it, it, uh, like I say, we are into recovery. We do have a windshield survey of the damage areas going on currently uh, with the assistance of Temple PD um, to uh, lock down all of the damage areas uh, that are within the city of Temple and to get us a good estimation of how much of the city is actually affected by this storm, either by the tornado or the straight line winds that came through. Um, if you choose to get out into, the, uh, into your, your yard or out into the, the community and help your neighbors or work on your own home, um, I'd like to caution you about a few things. First of all, power lines. Uh, do not approach them if you see a power line down. There is no way to know for sure if that power line is energized or not. Even if it is on the ground, it could be energized, and just merely getting close to it could be fatal. So please stay away from power lines. Um, if you do see those uh, down, and especially if they are on something metal, such as a chain link fence or something like that, stay away from the fence as well. It can actually energize several blocks worth of, elect of uh, metal fencing as well. And so, uh, again, if you see power lines down, stay, stay completely clear and away from them and call either Encore, uh, and you can also report that um, online, and I'm sure the Encore representative is going to give you that information here in a minute, or call 911 and uh, uh, one of the first responder groups will come out and check that line and make sure that Encore gets that. Uh, gas leaks, we've responded to a number of gas and propane leaks in the city, obviously. Um, kind of the same thing there. Uh, if you can, shut the gas off. Um, obviously, if it's a propane tank, just turn the, uh, the valve off. If it's the, uh, the gas valve, you can turn that off uh, very simply. Uh, but if you don't feel like you can do that, please call 911. They will get that uh, information to us and we'll come help, help with that. Um, if you smell gas inside your, your home or your business, again, call 911 and evacuate the structure. Uh, let us come and check, the, check it for uh, the gas and get the uh, uh, Atmos uh, representatives on the way. If you choose to get out and clear limbs, um, only do so if you are capable of operating that power equipment. So uh, chainsaws and other large power equipment is very dangerous in these situations. Um, when you go to uh, uh, cutting the trees and removing the trees, uh, some of them will fall or spring back in ways that you may not expect, and so be very careful with that. Um, I would recommend that you use a professional to remove most of these, especially if they're on a structure or uh, leaning over in some sort of precarious manner. Um, if you do get out there, make sure you wear all of the proper safety equipment. Uh, wear protective clothing head to toe, long sleeves, long pants, uh, heavy work boots, gloves, glasses, helmet uh, to, to help protect you in case something would go, go wrong. Um, absolutely stay away from any limbs or trees that are entangled in power lines. Again. They can be energized even if they do not look that way or not, are not actively arcing and can be deadly. Um, see, we do have uh, damage to four of our fire stations right now. Um, I do want to emphasize that while we do have damage and uh, one of our stations is significantly damaged, uh, we still are occupying those, we still are responding out of those, and we will continue to do so uh, to protect the citizens and the community of Temple um, uh, ongoing. So. Uh, Again, it's, uh, it's been a very challenging uh, 24 hours for us, or 12, 12 to 24 hours for us, and uh, we're going to continue to uh, serve and uh, protect the citizens to the best of our abilities. Good morning. I just wanted to give you a quick update on where things stand with Encore and power outages around our area. Our uh, restoration and assessment teams have been working throughout the night to get customers back on and get a handle on what kind of damage we've seen to our infrastructure throughout the area. Uh, we do have numerous down poles, some transmission towers have also uh, been impacted by the storm. Right now for the Temple area, we stand at around 40,000 customers out uh, System-wide, uh, right at the moment, we're under uh, 60,000, so the vast majority of our customers that are impacted are within the Temple area. Um, our assessment uh, period will continue throughout the day. We are moving personnel into the area um, to, to help out with the efforts. 
We have uh, staging sites that have been set up where poles and generators and transformers are being stored so that we can quickly move into those areas um, once they are safe to travel and get that equipment up. It's important to understand that a lot of this area, simple replacements, uh, will not be enough. We're looking at complete rebuilds for many parts of, many parts of this area. So that will take some time. Uh, we will want customers to practice as much patience. We understand this is frustrating and that um, a prolonged outage is something no one wants. We are moving people in to get power back on as quickly and safely as possible. But it's also important to understand that just because our uh, infrastructure and our equipment has been fixed, some houses will not be able to receive power after that. Uh, some houses will require uh, private electricians to come in. Uh, they will also require, in some cases, city inspections to be done. But we should have a better, ha better handle on that over the next few hours uh, as far as uh, how, how long those uh, restorations will take. So right now I'd like to kind of echo what has already been said, making safety the priority, safety for not only our employees but also our customers. As you are venturing out uh, to kind of assess the damage around your property, again, be sure that um, as you try and move some of the debris around uh, that it's not touching any power line. You should always assume that a down power line still is energized. Uh, if it's, uh, you know, as was stated, chain link fences, uh, vegetation, also pets and animals that might come into contact with our lines, it's possible that those can be energized as well. So put your safety first, stay clear of those things. Also check in with family members, uh, loved ones that might be without power. If you do have power, kind of make a plan. If you don't, uh, perhaps move to places where you can get power and, and put your safety first. Again, echoing back the, uh, about keeping our roads clear. Our crews will need room to work, so as much as it can be avoided, do not travel through impacted areas. Uh, we want to get everybody, uh, you know, everybody home safe. Many of our employees who are out working this storm, their homes are without power too, so they're eager to get this work completed quickly and safely as all of you are. I would say if there is a down power line that you come across as best you can, leave the area, keep others away from the area, but definitely call 911. Do not call Encore for a downed power line. If you have an outage, there are ways to communicate with us at Encore.com. You can also text out to 66267. That'll be a good, quick way to let us know your power is out so we can uh, kind of chase that back and, and make sure that we get those folks on. And uh, again, call 911 if you see a power, power line down, but obviously today we'll be working throughout the day, throughout the overnight as necessary to get everybody back on uh, putting employee safety and putting customer safety uh, as top of mind. Good morning. So we activated our Emergency Operations Center, our EOC, at 6.50 last night. As Chief alluded to, we were monitoring the weather. As soon as we identified that the damage was going to be fairly extensive, we went ahead and sent out our message, our mass notification message to our team and called them in when it was safe for them to travel. Uh, we got in, um, were able to start doing assessments, um, start figuring out um, where uh, the damage was primarily located, start working through those call, or we get, continue working through those call logs, I apologize. Um, that team includes fire, police, public works, communications department, city management, emergency management, a uh, lot of our leadership from the City of Temple was there and representing their areas, their departments. Um, we work collabor collaboratively as a team um, to address those needs as quickly as they are identified. Uh, we are also collaborating with our county partners. Um, I have been in close contact with Bell County Emergency Management. Um, Colleen Emergency Management has provided some assistance as well. 
um, any of our needs that are not able to be met here locally or resource requests, then we escalate that up to the state to the Texas Division of Emergency Management. Um, that's kind of how that request process works. The information will go up and then the resources when they're identified and available are uh, dispatched to us. Um, so we do have uh, an opportunity for volunteers. We've been receiving some requests. I wanna help, how can I help? What's the best way to engage? Uh, crisiscleanup.org, folks can go on and register uh, if they are affiliated with an organization. So if they are not affiliated with an organization um, already, then they can call 254-298-5970. And we will be able to um, try to plug them in, uh, run, uh, get their information, and, and identify what the needs are and how best that we can utilize them. Uh, we have opened a shelter location at the Wilson Recreation Center at 2205 Curtis B. Elliott Drive. Uh, we have partnered with American Red Cross. They are managing that site for us. We do have uh, some of our staff there to provide assistance and support to them. Um, we only had about 25 individuals there last night, um, but we do have more capacity. So if there is a need, um, as we go through the day, the temperatures warm up a little bit with the humidity. Um, even if folks don't need to stay overnight, they are welcome to go to Wilson Rec to, to get out of the heat. Um, that will be open as long as that need is, uh, is identified. Um, to report any downed trees, we have a list running and we are trying to work through uh, making sure that we have cleared roadways as, as our primary, um, but collecting that information, 254-298-5970, um, that same number that I mentioned a minute ago, you can call that number to report any downed trees, uh, if they're blocking roads, blocking alleys, if, um, if you need assistance with that. Um, gas leaks, if you do have any gas leaks, we do want 911 to be your primary contact for that. Um, you can also contact Atmos Gas Energy Line at 866-322-8667. Um, please, please, please monitor our social media, our Stay Safe Temple website, uh, local news. We will be putting out information as quickly as we have it identified. Uh, as the updates are available to us, we will be getting that out through all of those modalities. Um, as Chief mentioned, we are working on recovery now. We left the response mode. Um, we identified that we are now in recovery, and so we're, we're collecting information. We're assessing what does our um, short-term needs look like versus our long-term needs. Um, this is gonna take some time to get cleaned up, to get people back in their homes that have suffered significant damage, um, businesses that have experienced some uh, significant damage as well. They're not gonna be in operation for a while. Um, so we, we will have some separate um, uh, objectives that we're pursuing. Short term is more of the critical infrastructure. What do we need to do um, to get functioning, to get through our day to day? Long term is getting back to normal. That's kind of how we um, view those two buckets. Uh, so we will be working on that today as we have our assessment teams uh, providing information back to us. National Weather Service is here. They are going to start <coughs> doing um, their assessments. We're collaborating with them. Uh, and we will figure out what exactly our objectives are as we move forward and we'll be sharing that out. Um, I do wanna thank uh, everybody for being here and are you wrapping up? Okay, thank you. We will now be taking questions. Again, please state your name, your affiliation and who your question is directed to. Kevin Bell with Fox 4 out of Dallas. Chief Dispatcher by the National Weather Service. Where are they starting their uh, where are they starting was that the question yes. um, so actually do you, are you okay with coming up here <laughs> so I, I'm gonna ask Patricia to come up here with oh. National Weather Service and um, to help answer they, they're not gonna be able to answer many questions yet they just arrived so they're just getting started okay. um, but we'll have her um, see what she can answer for you well, good morning yes good morning. Um, we are going to go ahead and assess, of course, with the team of the experts here that they know more than us of where, the, of course, the worst damage is. But we hopefully get, get a sense of the extension, of course, how widespread, and then when to start in the end and how, how bad pretty much how the extensive is. So we're going to probably start uh, here with the team and, and see what, because they probably have a, already a, an area concentrated, and hopefully with that we'll move forward throughout the day. So hopefully this afternoon we'll get more information. Yes, I'm Patricia Sanchez, meteorologist for the National Weather Service in Fort Worth. Can you spell your name, please? 
Yes, Patricia, P-A-T-R-I-C-I-A, -I Sanchez, S-A-N-C-H-E-Z. Thank you. So I would tell you, as we enter the recovery mode, uh, the unfortunate reality is we will have some folks that try and take advantage of that. So if you see something, I need you to say something. Uh, contact your neighbors. Um, we do have a watch program that you can call in. Um, it'll be a bit challenging throughout this uh, to utilize that. Uh, but talk to your neighbors. Have them watch your properties. If you see something, say something. Call 911 if you see something suspicious. Um, as we enter the recovery phase, um, it is likely we will see some fraudsters emerge throughout this recovery. I would always tell homeowners to work closely with your insurance companies. Uh, you can always call us. Um, but if it's something just doesn't feel right, trust your gut instinct. Uh, but we're always available to help you and help you navigate that if you need us. So feel free to call us. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've raised one hundred and fifty times for y'all for the last twenty four hours or so. Um, I wanted to ask them um, where did y'all see the majority of the people that were injured? Um, so I know that they're minorly um, injured for the most part, but where did those people, where in town were they? Yeah, so uh, obviously uh, most of it was in West Temple, uh, in the uh, area of the worst damage that we've seen. Um, there were injuries at other areas, uh, obviously, as, uh, as things fell and were following, uh, following after the storm, but uh, a vast majority of those injuries were in West Temple. Um, how were um, uh, most of the people injured, per se? Were they outside during the storm, or were they home? Did their roof fall on them? How yeah, I, I don't have that specific information right now. So our, our best estimate right now, um, until we get our windshield survey done, is around 500, as I, I said earlier. Um, it could end up being some more than that. Um, there's a lot of homes out there with mi very minor damage uh, just to their roofs or uh, from falling trees or what have you. So I'm sure that number may go up significantly. Um, major damage is, uh, is less than that. We're, we're thinking in the 100 to 200 home range. Um, and that's homes and businesses. Um, but right now, it's, it's really hard to put a number on it. We're very preliminary into our uh, damage assessments, and so that's about the best I can do this morning. That contractor's name is uh, d &L Services. d and Enterprises. I'm sorry, not even close. <laughs> d and j Enterprises. And when they were here last time, they did a great job. They were here quickly, uh, well-equipped, and, um, and did the work very efficiently. D and J, E-N-T-E-R-P-R-I-S-E-S, -E -E -S, I think. Where, right? Where's from Alabama? I don't know. Alabama. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Templeville, Fox 4. Yes, sir. Temple does. It's still been a lot worse, too. Uh, it was bad enough, yeah. for sure. I mean, yes, it, I, it could always have been worse. I mean, I've, I've seen video of the tornado and the, the size of it. I mean, it hit a, a fairly populated area, you know, and also um, that's probably most of the, new, the newest construction in, uh, in Temple. So uh, new, well-constructed homes, and many of them were destroyed, and many businesses were destroyed. That was a, that was a substantial event, for sure. I would, I, I, would, I would encourage those folks to, number one, be patient. They're not forgotten about. Um, we, have the, uh, we have the services um, available through both equipment and people. And um, 
and you know, if worse comes to worse, then uh, we've gone to the point of um, of opening a, a shelter at at Wilson Recreation. So obviously, um, you know, take care of yourself as best you can. Don't hesitate to ask neighbors. This is a great time to get to know your neighbor, right? Um, I last night just driving around in my neighborhood, people were already out helping their neighbors clean up debris, etc. Um, and, and everyone has a heart to help. And so I would encourage citizens to, uh, to not be afraid to ask those people um, around them for help. So we're still assessing all of the stations right now, but I can confirm we have had damage at uh, station, Fire Station 3 on Midway uh, Drive. Uh, fire Station 5 on Apache, uh, Fire Station 7 on West Adams, which is by far the worst damage that we've sustained so far that we've found, and Fire Station 8 at the airport. Um, no fire equipment was damaged, uh, um, and uh, like I say, we still have our full response capability at this time, and uh, we have had a lot of offers of help and a lot of help from our mutual aid partners, uh, both professional and volunteer departments uh, in the area, plus several from outside the area that have called me this, uh, this morning and last night offering their assistance, and so uh, we are fully staffed, fully ready to respond to any of our citizens' needs, so, uh, but that's, that's the four that we can confirm right now. So treat those areas as a four-way stop. Uh, be patient, give way to the person that arrived before you. Um, as I was driving here, I noticed that many of the four-way stop signs that we put down uh, obviously have been blown down with the next round of storms that we've seen. So we'll be out resetting those uh, this afternoon. Um, but please, please be patient. And, and it's, uh, it can be sometimes confusing. So um, I need you to pay attention if you have to be out on the road. There's an easy way to solve it. Stay at home, stay off the road, please, as we navigate through the emergency phases of this. Thank you. All right, if there are no other questions, this concludes our press conference. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you.